the first uh, small indigenous community in the world uh, that the world should know about Kailash. The, the researchers, the scientists, the archaeologists, the historians, they have to work on it. are living in the three narrow valleys of uh, district Chadral, although they were the rural of Chadral once upon a time in the history. And uh, this is the uniqueness of Kailash that nobody uh, knows that who are Kailash, we are uh, from, they came to this country. This is the uniqueness of Kailash, the science, the archaeology and the history has not uh, proved we are from Kailash. Uh, this is the first uniqueness. Archaeological theory, we can say, because I belong to the archaeology and I am also part of the Directorate of Archaeology and Museums Government of KPK. So during the excavations, explorations, a lot of like research based work like DNA tests and everything like that. So we never like uh, found any Alexander's uh, um, related evidence in Kailash, in Chitral, in entire Chitral, right? The Kalash people have lived in the remote valleys of the Hindu Kush for centuries, preserving their ancient traditions and way of life. But the origins of the Kalash people are shrouded in mystery, with several theories circulating about where they came from and how they ended up in this isolated region. Some believe the Kalash people are the descendants of Alexander the Great. Almost 70% Kalashi believe on that theory. The reason behind is in 1994 when the Greeks, especially Athanasi Lorenz, he arrived in Kalash and he saw the people and he was also and believed that the Kalasha are descendant of Alexander the Great. And that time he established a school and after that they established a scholarship for the students. They did a lot of uh, developmental work in Kalash. Suddenly a uh, NGO coming to the valleys and they're working for them a lot. So the people start uh, starting to believe that we are descendant of Alexander the Great. There is another like uh, our concept is the archaeologists believe that Alexander was never been in that area. But his journal, Shalaksha, he was as a journal there for the Kalashi people, but he was not direct the descendant of Alexander. And the second thing is the Kalashi war there before Alexander. But there are also many theories like uh, we were the descendant of the Alexander the Great and uh, uh, also, you know, some people, the historian, they say that the Kalash are Aryans. Uh, but uh, the, the myths, the, the uh, folk songs, folk tales of Kailash uh, indicates clearly tell us that they are, we came from Siam. But still, we do not know where is Siam. While others think they are an indigenous tribe of the neighboring area of Nuristan, also known as Kafiristan, the third theory claims that the ancestors of the Kalash people migrated from a distant place in South Asia called Siam. In our songs and in our rituals, we describe the Siam. Siam is like an unknown place. Nobody knows where is Siam. Uh, we've gone through with the literature which was worked by the international and nat national scholars. And they mentioned that uh, the Kailasha war rule in Chitral. Uh, but uh, there was no like the kingdom in Chitral of Kailash. Maybe that was not on the record. Nobody recorded that kingdom in Chitral. Uh, Kailasha people uh... Almost 300 years they, were, they ruled in Chetan from a part of Gilgit to Afghanistan, uh, Kurnad province, some, uh, Asmar. Up to Asmar, we, we have ruled in Chetan. So uh, during the era of Kailash in Chetan, they were, you know, they, still there are some, uh, some uh, you know, they, they were the, the people thinking for development, like the Chiu Bridge. Chiu was our uh, king and they constructed a bridge and there are some irrigation channels. They had developmental mindset of the Kailash. So it's, it was uh, like uh, 700 uh, uh, BC, I think. I'm, I'm not clear about it, uh, yeah. but they, were, they have ruled their, uh, uh, you know, like centuries. Basically, you know, it was first established uh, in Kailash Valley. Uh, when uh, there was a temple, 
in different places but there was no decoration in, inside the temple but the decoration we uh, we we borrow it from the you know from the coffers from uh, Afghanistan. from Kapristan yes from Afghanistan so it was brought from there uh, to decorate the temples uh, like before of course there was a temple concept like gora court somewhere in kashmir uh, there were uh, in the ancient time they established two uh, two complete temples very first time one was in bamburet another was in kashmir so they bought this designs from abroad so we adopt a lot of things maybe we can borrow a lot of things The theory that the Kalash people are indigenous to Nuristan is more widely accepted. It is believed that the Kafir people who lived in the area before the arrival of Islam are the ancestors of the Kalash people. When Amir Abdul Rahman conquered the area in the late 19th century and forced the Kafir people to convert to Islam, many fled to Chitral to avoid conversion. She's from the Nuristan, you know? Like uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Kalash origin that uh, like the all the Muslims not came from Arab same like all the kalashis not came from okay. afghanistan not all the kalashis came from uh, greece like there are a lot of theory about it so uh, you know uh, of course there was uh, the nuristan before it was called kafiristan since uh, like uh, 1894 and in, uh, in after 1994 uh, uh, sorry 1896 and 94 when amir abdul rahman uh, you know he announced the journal slaughter and they were you know he announced that if anybody is not converting to islam maybe you can kill them so they killed a lot of um, yes a, a lot of uh, people there and some of them were run away from there and they came to chitral and they you know uh, they they just uh, uh, saved themselves in, uh, under the chitral territory but of course there is a lot of place in afghanistan why gal like you know and the language is also and we we have some altars that we believe that they are actually from afghanistan the kalash people may have come from different places and have different beliefs about their origins but what unites them is their love for their land their culture and their way of life as we leave this beautiful valley we are reminded that diversity is the spice of life and that every culture and tradition deserves to be celebrated and respected